and go. Hello Arlington, this is In Focus with your monthly show. In this month's episode, we will be looking into what the seniors are doing for the end of the school year, the library events, and how the EOC teachers are preparing for the upcoming EOC and multicultural club events. This is In Focus, and I'm your host, Julian Maxwell. For our first segment, we have information on the new library system. It is a trend in the library world to start putting, um, arranging your books by genre. And mostly students come in asking for where, where are the hor where's the horror section or where is the mystery section. And time and time again, I'd have to say we don't have sections, but what I'll tell you some authors in those genre. So really, it's to kind of meet the needs of the students. Well, actually, this is all Miss Balducci's baby. So she really, we have been going to some library conferences for the last couple of years. We have some, a great Tennessee association of school librarians, and we've started seeing lots of high schools do this. So we've been intrigued. Um, but we've never stopped and said, hey, we think this is something. We wanted to make sure it wasn't just a new trend because it's a big deal to touch 10,000 books, put a sticker on, decide what um, category they go in, and Ms. Balducci has done every bit of that. So we just decided after a couple years that this is something we really think would benefit our students and that would maybe encourage them to check out more or be interested in browsing the library where just going to a specific letter or having to know what you're looking for sometimes is intimidating and people don't come in because of that. We have um, horror or paranormal, when they're kind of put, if anything that's like you know, kill, kill, or ghosts and witches and va vampires, it's all going to be in paranormal. Um, we have mystery and like thriller, which would be like courtroom dramas, anything that involves inve investigators and detectives, that's going to be a mystery. Sports, um, we have romance slash relationships, we have historical fiction, fantasy, and then there's a general realistic fiction. That's going to be our largest one because it those are books that don't really fit into those other categories, so they just kind of realistic fiction. Okay, I can't list them all. Miss Balducci did a great job of choosing. I know like mystery, I know there's kind of a supernatural paranormal section, realistic fiction, um, historical fiction, one of my very favorites. Um, then we'll have a general fiction area, but within that there'll be the realistic fiction and uh, like multicultural um, topics. Um, we are not choosing to pull in our nonfiction books yet, but that is more of our long-term goal so that our nonfiction books, even like our sports books about LeBron James or about um, World War II will actually be within the fiction section. So nonfiction are true facts and information books, and then fiction are those fake fantasy make-believe books. Um, so that will be our long-term goal to actually, uh, to eventually put those in the section as, as well. Well, we started before Christmas, um, just organizing, and that was just a lot of computer work, just organizing within the catalog, the different titles and genre, putting them in categories, and then spreadsheets. And then after the break is when we started going around and just while it was in alphabetical order, we would take and like pick the sports section and just go hit every book with a yellow label and so that started in January, and so now we're at the end of February, and we're in the moving stage. So I think probably about three or four more days we'll be through with moving. And so after spring break, we're going to really kind of promote the, the new arrangement. Well, Ms. Balducci started actually labing, labeling each one several months ago, I believe. It's been a long process. Because, and then there are some, so she went through and pulled a list of all of our fiction books, um, which like I said, it's close to 10,000. And some of them are already category, categorized by subjects. Um, but then some are a little obscure. Some you had to decide which one, where would students most likely 
find this and want to pick this up to read. So she really literally put her hand on every single one and determined what section that should go in. So that process started a few months ago. And then now this moving process, where, so we're moving, like going through and picking all of the orange stickers or all of the blue stickers. So we have started that on Tuesday and um, are more than halfway done on Thursday. I hope that it will increase circulation. I've already gotten a lot of good positive feedback from students and teachers who've walked in to ask, what are y'all doing? What, what, what's going on? What's the mess? And even senior students are like, why are you doing that now? I've been here this whole time. So I, I hope that it will increase our circulation. That was our whole goal. That's why we didn't jump in right when we first heard kind of about this new genrefying the library. Um, because we weren't positive it would. We didn't know how it would change the library. We knew it was gonna be a lot of work and we don't mind the work, we're good hard workers. We just didn't wanna do it without a purpose. And our purpose was that it would be easier for our students and even our faculty and staff to be able to find books that they're interested in. Sometimes you get to an author, like I love John Grisham, and sometimes you get to that author and then once you're done with them, you don't even really know where to go. You can go online to like, what do I read next? And Goodreads has lots of great uh, options there, but sometimes it's just nice. Like when you go in Barnes and Noble, sometimes you don't have a specific title you want, you just want to go browse in that section. So we just think it's more user friendly and maybe. Um, um, I love doing displays. We haven't really done displays this month, this last few months because we've been doing this. So um, just those kinds of things to promote different types of books or different um, seasons. So um, I'll continue with those kinds of activities. Students will be able to find some books just for pleasure to kind of take a break and escape from we know y'all are super busy but um, if you could find that uh, escape in a book and if we can make it easier for you to find one that was our whole purpose in that uh, genre fine was our our first big step and then like I mentioned um, we are eventually our long long-term plan is to bring our nonfiction books into that so when you read maybe um, a sports book by Oh, Walter Dean Myers about basketball. You may even want to read, so you read that fiction one. Well, you may, if those nonfiction books were sitting right next to it, you may pick up a book and read some facts or statistics. You may want to read about John Wooden and how he was an inspirational leader as a basketball coach. And you might not have even known we had a basketball book on John Wooden. Um, so hopefully, um, Increase, uh, once we move those two, and that's a long-term plan, so it's not gonna be this year. Uh, hopefully in the next couple years, um, that would be probably our next step. For the next segment, we will be looking at how the EOC teachers are preparing students. The purpose of the EOCs are to test students and make sure that they learned all of the state standards for the year and also to hold teachers accountable for teaching that material. Well, we really start focusing on the EOC from the very beginning, but we will start in April pretty much exclusively reviewing for the EOC, re reviewing what we've learned for the whole year. The main thing I do is I just follow the standards when choosing what to teach and making sure I try to make sure to teach it in a meaningful way. So hopefully students will remember what we've learned all year. So in May or April, they need to be able to go back and remember things we learned in August in September, so um, I have that in mind every single lesson that I plan, and um, so I just try to work on that all year. Also, we use um, USA Test Prep all year uh, for our testing to make sure that we're focusing on taking the, looking at the kinds of questions that students will have on the EOC. My hopes and goals are that all of my students will be a level four, which is the top level, um, at least a level three, that would be awesome, and I believe they for the third segment, the Multicultural Club events that will occur. Multicultural Club is about bringing attention to diversity throughout our school and to bring awareness of other people's culture. We have taste festivals where we get food from other cultures such as Mexican culture or some Asian cultures and we will provide the food for a, short fee a small fee to students. We also, this past year, we had the Lunar Festival, which is during Chinese New Year, 
and we had the Black History Wax Museum, Human Wax Museum, and for the end of the year, to top it off, we're having a multicultural club fashion show. I've been in the club for, officially in the club for two years, but I was a participant in modeling my sophomore year. I just wanted to be a part of a club where we wanted to bring awareness of other people's cultures and I wanted to learn more about other people. I'm the president of the Multicultural Club. We have a, a multicultural fashion show coming up on March 29th. So several students, it's about 20 plus students, come dress in a culture of their choosing and they're going to represent the culture the way it should be represented. And we're also having several student performers and teacher performers that will be singing and dancing in the styles that they wish. For the Make something up. A final statement. We talked to the seniors on what seniors are doing in preparation for the end of the school year. I've taken the SCT. I've taken it about twice. Yes, I've studied it. Studied for about a good month or two. Uh, taking the online courses on the ACT website. Uh, I have to say math reading uh, i really much hate it you know why because it's basically it's based on how you do in school but if you don't learn anything in school you're basically screwed so i don't know how to say anything about that because like you could be doing horrible in class and that's how colleges judge you on how you're doing so well in class but if you take the act that could be a percentage on how good you get in college but if you screw on both of them but you really want to go to college you just Right down the drain. Yes, and I've taken it taken it once because it was a pain in my butt. <laughs> yes, um, I've bought the book, the ACT booklet, and I've gotten um, a practice booklet booklet from the office. Reading math definitely sucks. It's honestly pointless. Like if you get all A's and all that stuff, you're if you get a nineteen on the ACT, it's like, ooh, she's not smart. Or, ooh, he's not smart. It doesn't make sense. And then most colleges focus on ACT. Most of the time, not saying all colleges, focus on ACT score rather than your grades, which is really weird. No, I have not because I'm not smart enough to take it. No, because I haven't taken it. Um, use my notes from all the classes I've learned in the last few years. Uh, math, because I'm good at math. Uh, English, because I suck at reading. Uh, I feel like it's something that I have to do, but I don't want to do because I'm not good at taking tests. I haven't taken the ACT before, actually, but I've taken ACT prep. Took that last year when I was a sophomore, and um, it, I really don't remember much about it. I haven't studied for the ACT. Like I said, I took ACT prep when I was a sophomore last year, and uh, that's pretty much all the preparation I got. But, you know, I pay attention in class, you know. Um, so ACT is on Saturdays, right? So that Friday night, I'm going to probably stay up pretty late, you know, go to the gas station, you know, get a couple energy drinks. That way, you know, you're focused and your goal set in mind. Probably math part is the only part I'm really worried about. The other, other stuff is it's not really a way to study English. I don't know, maybe look over some of the rules. Science, you just read the passages and can't really study that. Math is the only one you can study, in my opinion. Um, probably English. English is probably the easiest because a lot of it's common knowledge. Like, you know, you, I've spoken English ever since I can remember. I don't remember speaking any other languages. Oh, math, for sure. I feel like everyone can agree. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too big into standardized testing, but... There, there could be worse forms of the ACT. Like, they could make it a lot worse. They could not curve it. That'd be a bummer. For the final segment, we talked to the seniors on what seniors are doing in preparation for the end of the school year. It was, uh, for me, in my opinion, I thought it was very quick and stressful, though. I mean, there was a lot of work to go on during senior year, but it was just a long year that was very stressful. Oh? Um, yeah. Um... Ready for it to be over, to be completely honest. It was fun. I mean, I had a good time. Uh, definitely would give anything to go back because not a lot of people are ready for the real world out there. And once you get out there, you realize that high school was 
actually a lot better than the real world. So I just think that high school is probably one of the best things to ever happen to anyone. A lot of work. Uh, it's mostly been a hassle. It's not really a lot of fun stuff to do. It's just a lot of work. Wait, there was one good thing. When Drake Bell came to the school, that was fire. Because Drake Bell is cool. But aside from that, it's been mad boring. Stuff your game up. Well, for me, I plan on doing, uh, I'm moving down to Florida with a few friends of mine. And uh, we're going to start a business down there. And after a few years in that business, I think I'm going to go to college and go into the Navy. I'm going to go to college. Got to go to University of Memphis. I'm going to major in English. I'm going to become a writer because I want to write. Or if that don't work out, then I'm going to just work at Subway because who doesn't like Subway? You like Subway, right? Yeah. I thought so. Um, I see myself probably anywhere where the Navy, where the Navy will station me. And wherever I have to, about my duty, I'll be. Are you excited to leave high school? A little bit. It's like half and half. I'm excited to see what lies ahead of me, and I'm still going to miss it every second of the way and miss everyone here. But, I mean, it's life. i got to be able to be prepared for anything. What will you miss most about Ten years. I'm going to have, like, a bomb wife. I'm going to have three to five kids. I'm going to be living in my dream house. And by dream house, I mean no mansions because I ain't spending all that money investing in me. You don't have to live expensive. You can live cheap and still be happy. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be doing my job. I'll be working. I'll be grinding. I'm be getting paid. You know that moolah, baby. You know what I'm saying? Walk a flock of told me. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Probably the people around me. It uh, was definitely a, a great run having all these people around me, influencing me, and helping me every step of the way. And I'll definitely miss that. I'm very excited to leave high school. I've been, I've been ready to leave here ever since I got here. Ninth grade was like, <laughs> it's going to be a cinch. Nope. Hard. Don't take I hope you enjoyed this month's episode. This has been In Focus, and I'm your host, Julian Maxwell.